Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to continue covering my games from Rabats and I'm going to show you my round 4 game, which is also my favorite game of the tournament, as uh, you'll probably understand why. But it's also uh, a game in which I made two quite, well, big errors, which I wish I hadn't made, but there's nothing I can do now. Uh, before I start, I'm going to tell you, I'll, I'll give you time to think about four positions, four critical positions in this game. One of the four positions is easy. Three of them are, in my opinion, very hard. Uh, and you can pause the video and calculate them. And great job in advance if you manage to solve all four. Uh, I only solve them during analysis correctly. Okay, so I'm playing a 2145 rated player. A player I've played before uh, two years ago, or maybe two and a half, and we played the pan of Karokana, it was on the black side. Uh, he offered the draw at one point when I was going to go a pawn up, pawn up. I went a pawn up, declined the draw, and ended up losing, and I was really upset after that game. So in this game he had the white pieces again, so he could play e4 again, but normally he plays d4 and he plays uh, knight f3 setups, uh, against knight of six e6 uh, and I was going to play an opening I've never played before I've been preparing for a long time but he surprised me he started with knight of three I played d5 he played e3 which is quite a slow setup and there are a few things he could play from here uh, after knight of six he could still play d4 uh, but he ended up playing c4 and after c6 of course he can now still play d4 going into the main line slav or semi-slav as it would have turned out but he played b3 now uh, i could play e6 and play d4 he could play d4 and queen c2 the anti-meran systems but in this case there's really no need to not develop my bishop so i played bishop f5 and just as in round two i ended up playing the london system in reverse but in this case i'm a bit more comfortable with the position because of this pawn structure. So he's basically playing an English slash Reti uh, against the London in reverse. Uh, we have bishop e2, pawn to e6, castles and bishop d6. Now if you remember in the last game my opponent had Fianchettoed his, his light squared bishop in which case there's really no point in putting the bishop on d6, uh, you put it on e7. Also in the last game my opponent was playing a king, king's Indian attack with d3 where e4 is reinforced and then if my bishop is on d6 e5 loses a piece of course but bishop d6 here has to be good okay bishop to b2 uh, i played h6 which again i don't think is necessary but i want to pre preserve my light squared bishop and he played d3 now in this case d3 i believe is a slight error uh, i understand he wants to play for e4 but probably d4 is 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 just better and he's playing a queen's indian in reverse basically uh, against the London and this, this has to be fine uh, for white. I would say the position is equal, but this is definitely better than d3. Now again, I haven't used the engine for, uh, for the game uh, when I was analyzing. And even though I, after the game and a few days after the game, I was sure I hadn't missed a lot in critical points, my analysis proved that I have and I'm going to use the engine after uh, uh, after I've shown you the game and I'll finally see if I'm correct. Uh, so, okay, I played knight bd7, he played knight bd2, I castled. And in this position, he, he I think, already went wrong. Uh, I think white should play queen c2 here. And of course, in most London system positions, black or white usually wants to expand with e4. In this case, I want to expand with e5. And here, if I play e5, he can just play e4 because e4 is defended by the queen. And after something like d4, knight e4, knight e4, d4, bishop e6, the position should be equal. Perhaps even white is slightly better, I, I don't know. But he played rook e1. And now e5 cannot be answered with e4 for now and he is sort of in trouble. Here he, he blundered, and this is the first position I'd like you to think about. How does white get out of this? During my analysis, I did find a solution which I think leads to an equal position. And I remember during the game, he hadn't spent too much time on this, but probably he, sh he should have. He, I think he thought for about 10 minutes. So 
pause the video, think about this position. What would you do with white? Okay, so th the very important factor which I'd missed and which obviously he'd missed is that this bishop is loose. This bishop is undefended. So you would like to play e4, but it's defended three times. However, if the queen is looking at the bishop, it's not defended three times because you lose the bishop. So my solution is cd, cd, and e4. And now after, after d4, d4, I cannot take because I lose the bishop. And now after knight e4, uh, knight e4, bishop e4, bishop d6, white is just a piece up and I lose. So after e4, d4 d4 i just have to play bishop h7 and accept what is probably an equal position although i'm not sure the difference is that this bishop is better than mine i think and this rook is developed mine isn't but this is definitely equal or slightly better for white there's no way black has anything in this position instead of that after e5 my opponent played bishop f1 and i believe black is now winning but I mean, we'll guess. I guess we'll we'll check with an engine later. So obviously, the move here is e4, and these pieces are perfectly set up for the Greek gift sacrifice on h2, which is what I was playing for, which is the idea in the London system when you play e4, e5 with white, or here e5, e4 with black. My opponent played knight d4. Now this is the second position I would I would like you to think in. So, do you take on h2 or not? Uh, take your time, pause the video. What you have to calculate after bishop h2 is both king h1 declining the trade because your bishop is hanging on f5, declining to take. And you also have to look at bishop h2, king h2. What do you do against that if he, if he takes the piece? So, pause the video, figure it out. Okay, uh, I did take. And I believe that was correct. In the game, he ended up playing king h1, which again is correct. Uh, and the solution to king h1 is, of course, bishop e5. You don't lose a piece. And now after knight takes bishop, you play bishop takes bishop. And in fact, you also win a tempo on the rook and, and just go back. Uh, but after bishop h2, I'd actually made a very serious mistake in my calculation, which had he taken the bishop... I would have played. Luckily for me, he didn't take the bishop because he's a stronger player than me, so he probably saw correctly. Now, the most obvious move when you play the Greek gift is knight g4 check, and you, of course, play that. Now, it should be said that king g1 or king h1 simply loses. If king h1, then you, you lose, it's a mate in two. If king g1, then you lose again to queen h4, and the only way to prevent mate is knight f3 any knight to f3, let, let, let's say this one, and now you just play queen takes f2, king h1, uh, take the knight, I don't know. Uh, if, if knight takes f3, then queen takes b2, I think should be good enough. And if queen takes f3, then queen h4 check, and after king g1, this is mate, so that's it and after queen h4 check if queen h3 then, then of course knight f2 so going back uh, to, to g1 wasn't hard to calculate but what i'd failed at was after king g3 again in the greek gift the most obvious move is queen g5 and i was focusing my calculation on that move and i think white is fine after queen g5 which during the game i thought was winning for black so here was my calculation. Firstly, if, if queen g5 is played and he plays knight f3, which seems fine, then e f3, knight f3, I was going to play knight e3 check, and after knight g5, I was going to play knight takes d1, and this seems like I'm just two pawns ahead, and, and it should be perfectly fine, or a pawn ahead, sorry. But after bishop a3, which I'd missed, white is probably just better attacking the exchange and I don't know let, let's say I move my rook he trades and let's say he plays knight f3 and I play knight c3 saving my knight I don't know I, I think white is fine here I, I don't think I'm winning maybe I'm wrong but I don't think I'm winning uh, but that's not the point uh, after queen g5, there's an even better move. And 
I was of course calculating this move as well, and that move is f4, which is very thematic in these positions. And usually, if the queen is on g6, uh, then you can just play knight e3, win the queen, blah blah blah. The problem with queen g6 here is that he takes uh, takes the bishop and defends here. So I think that's no wait. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that with an engine. I wasn't even looking at queen g6. I was looking at e f. So e f was uh, what I was planning to play. And after knight takes f3, queen g6 here, knight takes f5. Yeah, this was the problem. And again, it's the same problem as if I go queen g6 straight away. Once I take on e3 with check and he moves the king away and I take here, I'd miss knight e7 winning my queen. So in this position as well, if knight f5, knight e3, king h2, knight d1, knight e7 wins my queen. So I'd completely overlooked that. Still, after uh, bishop takes h2, if he had taken, I would have played queen g5. And hopefully I wouldn't have lost the game, but I definitely wouldn't have had a better position. Now here's what I found when I was analyzing the game afterwards, which of course is very logical and maybe I hope I would have come up with that during the game. But since I didn't even consider it before taking on h2, I'm, I'm not really sure I, I would find it. And the move is either queen b8 or queen c7, I don't think there's any difference. The point is that after this and f4 and I take, uh, there's my, my queen is much better and my queen is coming in. And in this position after king uh, f3, I can check on e5. So for example, knight e5, the king goes back to g3. If the king uh, goes here, then this is mate. Bishop d3 is mate. And after king to g3, I can play knight g6 check. The, the king again has to run away to f3. No knight h4 check. King to e2. And this I was analyzing over the board, so I did well. During the game, I don't think, without moving the pieces, I would have seen this stuff. And now I, I think queen g3 is good. And it should be game over. If he takes my bishop, this is mate. So probably queen c1 or queen c2, just to make room for the king. And now I can start taking stuff and, and this is winning. So, bishop h2 wasn't as simple as I'd thought. Now, during the game, I'd spent 17 minutes in this position calculating bishop h2. Obviously, it wasn't enough, but maybe, even if I'd spent an hour, I wouldn't have considered queen c7 or queen b8. Anyway, my opponent uh, did not take the bishop, luckily for me again. And as I said, we got, we got to this position. Now, uh, my main threat here... Uh, at any point is to play knight g4, queen h4, and mate him on h2. So he has to watch out for that. Uh, in that light, in that respect, I could have played bishop c3, which I'd been considering uh, seriously, which gives my other knight the e5 square. So for example, he plays something stupid, I take, take, play knight e5, and now I, I go here. First g6, of course. So one more stupid move, let's say, and knight here, and, and here, and... And that's it. It's game over. But I, I played bishop e5 because I wasn't sure I could do that. Uh, here he played cd, cd, and he played f4. Now, of course, you have to take that. He took with the knight. Uh, I was slightly concerned about the gf, but I found g6. And if, if knight h6, then king g7. And if knight g4, then I just take it. And he is hanging a checkmate. On h2 if he takes my piece. If he doesn't take my piece, he's still hanging a mate. So knight takes. Uh, and now I played knight g4. Uh, of course, I'm threatening knight f2. Check, winning the queen, so he has to move the queen. So he played queen e2. I played g6, finally getting rid of one of the knights. The knight went to d4, and now I played rook d8. And this move actually threatens uh, to win the knight. If he plays something stupid, again, let's say a3, then I can just take on d4. If he takes with the knight, it's mate in two uh, on h2. And if he takes with the pawn, then I, then I take the queen. So he has to move the queen again, so he played queen d2. And now I had probably the longest think of the game, although I don't remember. I didn't know how to get my pieces into play. I obviously want to mate him, but the knights are con the knight is controlling the h4 square, and there's no way to remove both the knights. So I came up with queen f6, queen f5, queen h5. 
It's a slow plan, but I, I thought it could work. He played knight e2, which I think is a good plan, trying to play this and cover uh, all the checkmates. I continued with my plan queen f5, he played knight g1, and I played bishop to g3, and now he is losing a pawn by force. Because when the bishop is on g3 and the knight is on g1, which is very important, knight f2 is mate, unless he can take it. So here, if he moves the rook away, then I take the pawn on e3. If he plays rook e2, which happened in the game, then I still take the pawn on e3. And now, of course, if queen takes, I take the queen. If rook takes, I play knight f2, mate, not mate, he has to give up the queen. So after, after rook takes e3, he played knight h3. Uh, I got my rook into play, he played king g1. And I got my last piece into play, knight d to f6. And I'm using all of my pieces. I have to break through somehow. Uh, and I, I didn't know how to improve. He helped me here. He played knight d4. And I played queen e5. Of course, now I'm threatening to win the knight. I'm threatening to win a piece. I'm threatening mate. I'm threatening everything. And he played rook e3, the losing move. Uh, Pause the video here. This is the final position I wanted to show you. This is black to play and win. It's a mate in two. Just, yeah, just mate him. Okay, uh, first I'd like to say that after the game, I sent the game over to Milan, my coach, and I said, where did I go wrong? Why did it get so complicated? He said, well, everything was fine, except that you missed the mate in two. And I said, what? <laughs> So the mate is, of course, bishop check and whatever he takes with queen h2 is mate. Uh, I, I don't have an excuse for this. The reason why I played queen e5 was to win a piece, not to mate. I wasn't thinking about mate, which is completely wrong. Also, after rook e3, a better move that, than what I played was just winning the knight. So I could have just taken the knight for free and then taken the rook one move later. Instead of that, unfortunately, I played what I'd intended to play without checking, and I played it, I, I hope, instantly, although, although I don't remember. I just exchanged everything, and in my mind, I was happy that, that I'm two pawns up, everything's traded off, I'm going to win. I missed a mate. Well, yeah, the, I'm a bit ashamed about that, but what can you do? Uh, knight c2, rook e7, uh, knight d4, uh, and here... Here I think I, I made another mistake. Um, I exchanged rooks. I, I played rook e1, which of course threatens knight e3, winning the bishop, uh, if he moves the rook, so he has to trade. But trading the rooks off actually made this harder to win, I think. So here's how the endgame went. I'm two pawns up. I should be easily winning, but still hard. I should mention that by this point, my opponent was... My opponent had maybe a few minutes on the clock. And I'm going to say I had 20, maybe 25, I think something like that. Okay, bishop e2, bishop to d2. I wanted to get my bishop of the back rank and restrain his knights as much as possible. King f1, bishop to e3. Uh, he played knight b5 here. Uh, I played king f8. He played bishop f3. And now I would like to take this bishop because it's his strongest piece. But I wouldn't like him to, to trade it for this one. So I played knight h2. And after king e2, I played bishop c5. And of course, th this bishop has nowhere to go. So I'm going to trade my knight for the bishop. My knight is not in trouble or anything. So he found b4, which is good. Uh, sort of making my bishop move again. Uh, if, I st if I go to b6, which I would like to do, then he plays knight d6. And I thought this was unclear, so I didn't want to do that. So after b4 I just took, he took on a7, he took on f3, king takes f3, and they played g5. I think it's important to give my bishop the f4 square, and it's even more important to make it harder for his knight to move out. Of course, if he plays knight g1 or knight f2, I have bishop c5, and that, that's game over. So he played g4, uh, king e7, getting my king into play, knight b5, uh, bishop to c5, preventing knight d4. So he played d4, which I think is good. Uh, bishop to b4, knight f2, bishop to d2, king e2, and bishop to f4, and king f3. And in this position, I played king d7, he played knight to d3. And 
the knights getting into these squares is is I mean that stuff. I don't want to allow that, but there's no way to prevent it. So instead of moving my bishop again, uh, for example, bishop d6, knight d6, king d6, knight e5, I played king c6, and there's a forced line which I'd calculated, hopefully correctly. I don't know. I'll check with an engine. But the line is this, knight a7 check, king b6, knight c8 check, king c7, knight e7, bishop to d6, knight f5, h5. And I have to trade my weakness, uh, so he has to take because I'm threatening to take the pawn. And after knight h5, he of course plays king g4, and I play knight f4. And to calculate this, I got down below 10 minutes. I think I had about 5 minutes left here, maybe even less than 5 uh, and in this position he played knight e5, which is a bad move. I was also only calculating that when I was calculating this variation. During my analysis I found knight d6, which may be better, king d6, and then knight f4, and here, and yeah, there's no hope in this endgame. I, I thought this may be... Well, this is definitely better than the game, but I think black still wins easily. I probably just play king e6. And if he, I don't know, king g4, I can just play g5. And Yeah, this, this is an easy win still. So probably there was no hope. But he played knight e5, and I exchanged d5. I played knight d3, trading pawns, king g5, knight e5. And this works because after king f6, attacking my knight, attacking the pawn, I have to move knight c4. And, of course, he cannot take the pawn on f7. If he takes the pawn on f7, it's game over. And this is just... This is obviously just a lost end game. I mean, this is lost. So after knight c4, he cannot take the pawn. And he was playing with increment. This is a 90 plus 30 game, and he was playing with the 30 second increment. So even though he is a much better player than I am, uh, of course, he... he it's not strange that he missed this. He played knight e7, I played d4. Uh, he played knight d5 check, king d6, uh, knight to b4, uh, knight to e5, finally defending my pawn. Uh, he played king f5, I played d3, and here he finally resigned. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to queen. Uh, th there is nothing he can do now. If he moves the king towards the pawn, I just push. If he moves the knight, I just push. It's, it's over. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's check this with an engine. So, okay, the first position after e5. My solution was cd, cd, and then e4. Let's see. The engine says this position is equal. It says plus, it says minus 0.1. So cd, cd, e4. I take it. He takes, and I go bishop h7. Yeah, and I thought this was slightly better for white or equal. The engine says completely equal. But yeah, it's that definitely fine. He played uh, bishop f1. Whoa! Minus two and a half after e4. Okay, so e4. Apparently, knight h4 is better than knight d4. And I can understand that because it doesn't allow... Well, maybe it still allows the good gift. Okay, this is complicated. What if he takes... Ah, okay, still this queen c8 stuff. Okay, yeah, this would have been much harder to calculate. I, I don't know how to calculate the Greek gift with the knight on h4. Oh, yeah, after knight d4, the engine says minus 3.3. .3. King h1 is correct. If he takes, let's just check the analysis. King g1, what? Oh, and then giving up the queen, okay. Let's have a look at king g3. Yeah, queen c7. Queen c7 minus 10. Queen g5, zeros. Okay, so at least my analysis after the game was correct. Oh, this would have been embarrassing. Okay. And then let's... Uh, yeah, there's nothing else to check. I mean, let's see. g6 immediately. Okay, I don't even have to take the pawn. Takes is correct. Knight takes. Knight g4 is correct. G6 is correct. Bishop g3 immediately. Okay. 
that makes sense. But yeah, my moves are fine. Even queen f6 is fine. Even queen f5 is fine. It's minus 6. The engine doesn't take on e3. That's weird. Why not? Okay. Yeah, I mean, all my moves are fine. The engines don't... The engine doesn't play them, but it's... It's fine. Yeah, and then the mating too. Okay, so... This was the round 4 game. After 4 rounds, I had 3 out of 4, which is great. Uh, and I'd finally beaten someone stronger. I hope you liked the game. I mean, it was a very tough game. Congratulations if you calculated all the positions correctly. I couldn't during the game. Uh, let me know what you think. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.